In the traditional chip manufacturing route, silicon-based chips are produced using silicon materials, and their performance has reached the level of 5 nanometers and below. Even TSMC and Samsung are sprinting 3 nanometers, and will conquer 2 nanometers in the future. But the more difficult it is to go down, and there is also a great dependence on EUV lithography machines. Huawei develops new chip technologies and explores new chip fields, such as chip stacking and photonics. What are the results of the industry on these chips? Can a new chip break Moore's law? Quantum of light, exploration of optoelectronic chips. Semiconductors have been developed for half a century. Since humans discovered transistors, integrated circuits, and created microelectronic chips, chip manufacturing has developed from micrometers to nanometers. And achieve 7 nanometers, 5 nanometers, and 4 nanometers, and other standards. Samsung has achieved 3 nanometers mass production, and TSMC will also break through the 3 nanometers mass production process in the second half of this year. However, the chip manufacturing process continues. TSMC has confirmed that it will mass produce 2 nanometers chips in 2025 and use the more advanced ASML high numerical aperture system EUV lithography machine to achieve 2 nanometers chip production. However, no matter how advanced a chip is, under the constraints of the physical rules of silicon materials, it will eventually reach the peak of its performance one day. Five or ten years from now, if the chip manufacturing process cannot continue to break through, will there be room for chips to explore? Actually there is. New manufacturing technologies can be developed outside of silicon materials, and new materials can be tapped. For example, Huawei has developed a chip stacking technology, which uses advanced packaging technology to stack two chips together. Although the chip area will be sacrificed, it can be exchanged for a good performance improvement. In addition, Huawei is also laying out photonic quantum chips, and energy production can be achieved using photonic quantum chips or without a lithography machine. Because the materials used in optical quantum chips are different from traditional silicon-based chips, and the transmission speed of optical quantum chips is faster than that of silicon-based chips, it can achieve the same performance without top-level semiconductor equipment. The industry is exploring more and more such photonic chips and optoelectronic chips. German companies have formed a technology alliance for photonic quantum chips to build photonic integrated circuits. In China, the research team of Guaguangsan of the University of Science and Technology of China has realized quantum interference based on the photon energy valley hall effect and accumulated more experience for the development of photonic quantum chips in China. It is worth mentioning that the United States is also very interested in optical quantum chips and once put forward a request for technology sharing. To put it nicely, it is technology sharing, but in fact it is asking for technology for nothing. However, the technology that has been painstakingly developed in China will not be easily shared not to mention the frequent measures taken by the United States against Chinese semiconductors, and there may not be any idea of sharing. In terms of optoelectronic chips, there is also good news from the Chinese R&D team. The research and development team, composed of Zhong Yong and Xiao Minit of Nanjing University, has made a major breakthrough in the field of optoelectronic chips 
and invented a new non-reciprocal femtosecond laser polarized ferroelectric domain technology. This technology can compress the light diffraction limit of femtosecond lasers to the level of 30 nanometers. This is the first breakthrough in the industry from micron to nanometer level, laying a certain foundation for the development of optoelectronic chips. Optoelectronic chips are one of the directions that the industry is actively exploring, but some past explorations have only stayed at the theoretical stage, and there are not many achievements from the laboratory to practice. It is hoped that more research results will be implemented, so that photonics and optoelectronic chips can achieve industrial development. Can a new chip break the limits of Moore's law? There are tens of thousands of types of chips on the market. According to different needs and application fields, all kinds of chips are produced to give full play to their value. Especially in consumer electronic products, such as smartphones and computers, high-end chips of 7 nanometers and 5 nanometers are often required to meet the demand, but the related drawbacks have also emerged. On the one hand, high-end chip manufacturing costs are high, and it costs $120 million to purchase an EUV lithography machine. On the other hand, the higher the high-end chips are, the more difficult it is to go down. If the power consumption cannot be suppressed, the cost may not be directly proportional to the use benefit. In addition, high-end chips will encounter the limit of Moore's law. At the level of 2 nanometers and 1 nanometer, it basically touches the apex of the physical rules of silicon-based chips. According to Moore's law, the transistors of an integrated circuit double every two years. However, after reaching the limit, the number of transistors cannot continue to increase, and it is difficult to exert higher performance. So can new chips break the limits of Moore's law? From a theoretical point of view, this may be possible. Take optoelectronic chips as an example. This kind of chip uses photons as the transmission medium. The transmission speed of photons is faster than that of electrons, so it is easier to improve performance. Of course, in order to form a new photon quantum, the optoelectronic chip industry chain still needs time to settle. After all, the silicon-based chip industry chain has developed for decades and various semiconductor devices and materials created are developed based on silicon-based chips. Therefore, in order to promote the new chip into a huge industrial chain market, we have to accumulate a lot. But the accumulation in the early stage is also very important. Maybe when others are just starting out, we have already made the necessary preparations. Both Huawei and the Chinese scientific research team are developing new types of chips, such as photonics and optoelectronics, which can be mass-produced without a lithography machine. The United States continues to take measures in the field of chips, only because of the deep accumulation of patents in traditional silicon-based chips. But in the new chip, the United States is also in its infancy. If China grasps the core technology of new chips, it is believed that it will bring different industrial effects. Are you optimistic about the development of new chips? Feel free to share in the comments below.